I hope you're all well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a July wrap-up. It's my first wrap-up for this channel. Technically first wrap-up ever. I have to say it was actually a good, a solid reading month for me. I read seven books and of those seven, only one was really a dud. <laughs> the rest I thoroughly enjoyed. So with that, let's get started. So the first book I read this month was Passing by Nella Larson, which I spoke about in last week's video on the Harlem Renaissance, so I'll link that below. I gave this a five star. I thought it was a really compelling short novel. It's about these two light-skinned black women, so these two women who can pass as white if they so choose. And Claire has decided to pass herself as white and has gone so far as to marry a white racist man. And Irene, on the other side of the spectrum, has stayed in the black community. She's married to a successful black doctor. They're very involved in their community. And Claire <laughs> willfully inserts herself into Irene's life to get access to this community of black people. It's about charming Claire and, and her wanting to reconnect with black society, and Irene who thinks her behavior is really reckless and is aggravated by the in the way that Claire is using her. It was really interesting. The writing was really strong. It when you're in the Harlem Renaissance scenes like at the parties, it kind of gives you a little bit of a great Gatsby vibe with a little less hedonism. And yeah, it was just a really interesting read and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So this is a 5 for me. The next book I read was Hitting a Straight Lick with a Crooked Stick. I also spoke about this book in the Harlem Renaissance video. It is a short story collection by Zora Neale Hurston, and I gave this four stars. As a short story collection, there are always going to be stories that really speak to you, and it's kind of a mixed bag. So there were some stories that I really, really, really loved. The first one, John Redding Goes to Sea. There was another one called Drenched in Light that I really enjoyed. Um, Magnolia Flower, I believe, was the other one. And then Sweat. It wouldn't say that it's necessarily a straightforward read. I think it's one of those that you need to digest a little bit. The vernacular, which Zora Neale Hurston is really good at writing in, can be a little bit difficult at times but it's a really, really interesting and compelling read. If you want to learn more about the Harlem Renaissance, I think this is a good, a really good introduction into that time period. So the next book that I read is historical fiction, which is my most read genre. And I have to say I was appalled <laughs> by the fact that I had never heard of this author because it, it, it was a great book. So that, <laughs> that great book is The Paying Guests by Sarah Waters. I kind of waffled between four and five, but in the end I did give it a four. It is set just after World War I in London. The main character, Francis, is a spinster, although I hate that term, who lives with her mother and kind of in the wake of the war, because of financial hardship, these women end up needing to take lodgers into their home to help pay the bills. So the barbers move in, Lillian and Leonard. I didn't really know anything about this book going into it, but it was so juicy. It's essentially a story about secrets, big and small secrets that these four people who are living in the same house keep from each other, secrets that they keep from society at large, and there was a queer storyline which I was not expecting but ended up being so good 
so it was it was a steamy one um but just so well written and there's a plot twist that kind of pops up probably in the second half of the book that oh my it like did not see that coming and it made the second half of the book that much more riveting I really 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 <laughs> really enjoyed it the next book that I read was The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett and I think it was actually really interesting to to read this book so soon after I finished reading Passing. It's a family saga. So the story starts out with these with a set of twins, Stella and Desiree, and eventually their paths diverge. Stella goes on to pass as white, marries a white man, and has a daughter who doesn't know her family's history. Desiree ends up marrying a black man, has a daughter who is a young black woman, and their daughter's lives eventually intersect and so it's it's a really interesting story about again racial identity in addition to the black characters there was also transgender representation in this book which also was really an interesting facet of the story at its root i think this is a story about identity i really enjoyed it and i gave it five stars and I feel like I'm one of the last people to have read this, <laughs> but if you haven't, please do. It was great. The next book is Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Marie Semple. Should have checked that before I started filming. Hold on. By Maria Semple. I was close. I listened to this as an audiobook on Libby, which I have since become addicted to. Thank you, Noelle Gallagher. <laughs> um, but I... I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. First of all, the narrator of Where'd You Go Bernadette is Pepper Ann, if there are any 90s kids out there. And I just, for the life of me, could not divorce the two. Like, I just kept envisioning Pepper Ann reading this, and it was, and it was very distracting. <laughs> it's a it's a comedy. I'd even say that it's a satire. It's written in the form of emails and faxes, even a FBI report. And it's about Bernadette, who is this agoraphob- agoraphob- <laughs> I can't talk. Why? Um, <laughs> is this agoraphobic architect and she ends up vanishing before the family's schedule scheduled trip to go to Antarctica and I like I don't need to like the characters like I'm not one of those people that feels that a main a character needs to be likable in order for the story to be good but I just thought all of the characters in this book were really whiny and self-important and with the exception of Bernadette's daughter B, <clears throat> the adults in this book were just all really obnoxious. Oh, and there's also the fact that Bernadette doesn't really go missing until you're like, I feel like you're three quarters of the way through the book. So the title also very, very misleading, <laughs> at least in my opinion. So I ended up giving that book two stars. The next book I read this month, well technically last month since when this when this is going live, we're in the first week of August, The Last Great Dance on Earth by Sandra Guland. This was the third book in the Josephine B trilogy. This was another epistolary novel um, written in the form of Josephine Bonaparte's own diary entries. This one picks up 
where the last one left off, which is when Napoleon is crowned emperor and also Josephine crowned empress and then goes through the rest of her life up until her death. It's a historical fiction set kind of in the backdrop of the Napoleonic Wars, which is a period in history that I have recently <laughs> become obsessed with. And at its core, it is this love story between Napoleon and Josephine. And I did enjoy it. I ended up giving it three stars because I didn't love it as much as I did the first book in the trilogy or even the second. I actually at the beginning of the book felt that the writing style was a bit hurried or stiff or something like it it felt like Sandra actually took a little bit of time to get back into the groove of the story she was writing but it did even out and I really enjoyed it. The last book that I read in July was The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I really, really, really loved this book. It, like, if I could give it more than five, five, if I could give it more than five stars, I certainly would. It was recommended to me by my friend Liz, but I also saw that Noelle Gallagher read it, loved it too. It's the story of Stella Lane, who is this really brilliant econometrician, which I didn't even know <laughs> was a thing, who has autism, and because of her autism, she struggles with social interactions, but she especially struggles with romantic relationships and sexual intimacy, so she ends up hiring an escort to teach her, and romance ensues. And I listened to this as an audiobook. Disclaimer, this is not an audiobook I would listen to on speaker or with parents <laughs> in earshot because it does get a little steamy, but the audiobook version was great. I really loved the narrator. And it, it's just, the romance is just so adorable. Like, so adorable. And I loved Stella. I loved Michael. But it, it's, re it's really such a sweet, sweet romance. I really enjoyed the way that Helen went about, Helen Huang went about portraying her character, explaining sort of the internal, like, life of someone with autism, like all the fears and apprehensions, and the first book I've read where the main character, with a main character who is autistic. Um, but yes, it was brilliant. And on that note, that wraps up my July wrap up. Anywho, I want to thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. And also, what did you read in the month of July that you really enjoyed? I'm always looking for recommendations. So again, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in my next video.